every year in fantasy, there are those certain players that break out and you're drafting them before that breakout. We've got some really important names to discuss on today's episode. Make sure you subscribe and click that bell. Foot Clan, we're all kind of looking for a bright spot right now, are we not? Mm-hmm. Well, I got one for you. There's a hilarious new series on Apple TV Plus starring Jason Sudeikis called Ted Lasso. It's about an American football coach who heads to England to take a shot at managing one of the world's most competitive professional soccer teams. It's an age-old story. Of course. If you like a show with big laughs and a lot of heart, then this is the one you've been looking for. Watch Ted Lasso right now on the Apple TV app. Subscription required for Apple TV+. Plus. What's up, Foot Clan? Oh, yeah. You know what time it is. It's fantasy football time. Mmm. It's time to get it. Everything you've got. And that starts with the ultimate draft kit. You looking for tiered rankings? All right. How about over 100 video profiles? Okay. Sleepers. Breakouts. The UDK is never, never going to give you up. If you're all in this season, stop wasting time and slide into ultimatedraftkit.com. To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tuesday, August 25th, the Fantasy Footballers, back with you, Andy, Mike, and Jason. I, uh, well, Jason and myself, we didn't, we didn't know that intro was coming. Mm. That was, um, that was all Mike and someone else, (laughs) one of our esteemed producers. That was, uh, you know, something special. You you know it. Something sultry. (laughs) You can get the Ultimate Draft Kit at ultimatedraftkit.com. Get ready to go for 2020. So excited about the show today. We have breakouts. We're going to be working through some feelings at the top part of the show. It's always a good thing to do. Yeah. Talk, and uh, we appreciate all the new listeners that are subscribing, tuning in, getting ready for the 2020 season. Thank you for the reviews on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen. I feel like now I'm in just a... Oh. I'm kind of calm down, <laughs> baby. Yeah. Let's get into that. Quick question. That sounded like Mitch Hedberg. Let's talk about, <laughs> let's talk about some Kenny G. Yeah. It just Waffles are just pancakes <laughs> with syrup traps. All right. Players to forgive. Who is the player that you're willing to forgive from last season? So... um. Every offseason, there's a lot of hype, there's a lot of excitement, there's a lot of expectation, and sometimes players come out and they have a good year, not a great year, they don't live up to the hype, so to speak, and they need to be forgiven. Other players get hurt, other players, uh, you know, it's the they call them post-hype sleepers for a reason. Sometimes you're a year off on a player, but I want to know, gentlemen, who are you forgiving? I'll jump in here. I am forgiving. James Conner, running back from the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, there is this tier of running backs right around there that Conner is involved with, but Todd Gurley, David Johnson, all guys that, look, you're, you're going to have to work through your feelings and forgive somebody if you're going to draft them. And for me, it is James Conner because, to me, the only thing stopping James Conner from being a top 10 running back is health. Now, the health is a very large question, But those other guys in that tier, there are larger questions that have to be answered along with health. We saw Connor Connor still put up three top 10 weeks 
in his limited amount of work with terrible quarterback play. Let's let's also not forget Ben Roethlisberger is back. All reviews for uh, the quarterback at a training camp have been glowing. It's still being reported. You know, James Conner is the guy for this team. We'll see if he can play his way into another contract. But for this year, if James Conner is healthy, he's going to be a complete draft steal. So you're forgiving him? I am. Did it take you a long time, or was this a quick uh, well, emotional? So I, he he was a my guy for me last year. I was all in yeah. on James yeah. Conner. And that's a deep cut. That's I mean, that, that hurts. It was. It, it was. It burnt. Here, here's the thing about James Conner. And we've said it on the show in the past. He's not going to finish where he's being drafted, right? He's the kind of player that if he's the guy and he's healthy, he's going to be much higher in final fantasy finish for 2020. Or he's going to be hurt. They're going to share time. It's going to be multiple running backs, and, and then he won't be a fourth round pick. No, no. So interesting. Mine's in that same category, that same range of running backs, and it's David Montgomery. Mm. David Montgomery is a player that. I think people have a hard time liking <laughs> after last year, the excitement, the preseason hype, how good a running team Chicago was the year prior with Jordan Howard. It all fell apart for Matt Nagy. If you remember the press conferences with Matt Nagy, it was like, yeah, I want to run the football, but they were running it like 39% of the time and trusting Mitch Trubisky 61% of the time. It wasn't a good situation, but as a rookie, I mean, 277 opportunities or carries in that offense. Sure. Finished at number 25 at the position. Sometimes gets lost in the equation. And if he, he he should be the only goal line option for Chicago. So if things improve on offense, he's a very capable pass catcher. I think what he did last year is probably the basement of what you're going to see from David Montgomery. So I'm willing to draft him on the hopes that and his camp reports have been glowing as well. Yeah, he, I mean, he he has uh, taken the. The health and the fitness to another level, allegedly. If you're new to the show, I always talk about I love when running backs lose weight. I love when wide receivers gain weight. I don't generally like when a running back says, oh, I'm going to bulk up and put on weight so I can make it through the season. We've just seen it change the athletic profile for players too many times. It takes away from that player what they, they are, but when a running back loses weight, they're in excellent shape. The hard part for forgiving David Montgomery uh, is he was around the whole time. Like there's, you can't point at an excuse really for David Montgomery other than he wasn't that good for for fantasy. Like you said, the opportunities were there. He was there every game. He just had such little fantasy production that it. It's it's difficult to to go back he, in. He's actually for for a player to get over 275 carries. This is something that Brad Evans pointed out. He basically had the lowest finish of <laughs> Brad, any player. This is from Brad. <laughs> well, when he po he posted 275, that right. number, you generally finish inside that top 24. It's a matter of them getting into the red zone. I mean, you you have these players on bad. This is my fear for any of these bad offensive situations. You three and out. Three and out, three and out. Not re no red zone opportunities, no inside the five opportunities. He's a tackle breaker. He was one of the best in football. He just has a mediocre offensive line and a bad quarterback situation. But I love knowing that he's going to get two hundred seventy five to three hundred opportunities. Well, uh, the the good news for David Montgomery, obviously, they bring in a new uh, star player to the offense who's been tearing it up in camp, which should help the offense. Their star has been reportedly Jimmy Graham. So oh now goodness. that they've added Jimmy Graham to the Bears offense, oh. watch out, goal and line Cole opportunities. Komet. And Cole Komet. Yes. Yeah. Uh, for me, this this is, uh, look, people are wondering, is it is it Phillip Rivers? No, get P. River out of my life. I'm not ready to forgive yet. But Zach Ertz was a player. You're who, not going to swim? Who last year, I don't know if you guys remember. No, I'm not swimming <laughs> in P. River, Mike. Um, not I again. I don't know if you remember <laughs> last year. Those of us who had Zach Ertz do remember. But he really stunk the first half of last year. I mean, like, really bad. Six of the first eight weeks, he wasn't in the top 12 that's, at tight end. Yeah, he that's was, brutal. That's a wasted pick at tight end. It was a wasted pick. It was terrible. And you ever have one of those guys where you've got them for their bad stretch and you <laughs> trade them and then they're great? 
that's what I experienced, and that that hurts. It doesn't feel good. You, you actually did the opposite with Greg Olson a few years back. You watched him dominate the NFL and then traded for him and for his bad stretch. Yes, yeah, so yeah. I did the same, just in reverse order. <laughs> um, uh, but I I never forgave Greg Olson. I am forgiving Zach. Yeah, Ertz. he's on our bathroom wall. <laughs> he's uh, <laughs> Olson. Yes, I hold grudges. Um, but with Zach Ertz, I've been rising on him. Uh, you know the the hairline thumb fracture for for Goddard, the nebulous situation of the receiving core, the questionable health of Alshon Jeffrey, and age of Deshaun Jackson. In the end, Zach Ertz is just going to be a really valuable tight end. And the nice thing is, he keeps dropping every live draft that I'm doing. I just see Zach Ertz fall to the fifth. People don't want him. No, so, he's being disrespected. Yeah, he is, and I like that for my emotions and for um. More importantly, the value. I So I'm back in on Zach Ertz. And honestly, he's been one of my targets in the last few drafts I've been doing. So let's go. I think he's also feeling left out from the like uh, bag of cash party that's going on with George Kittle and Travis Kelsey. Mm. Yeah. Dallas Goddard came out today talking about how Zach Ertz deserves an extension. and He's in his contract year, I believe. I think he's Is got he? two years left. Oh, yeah. really? Okay. Yeah. But um, that didn't stop nobody. <laughs> you can, yeah, Kel you can Kelsey had time left, too. Um, you can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers, the community. Over 10,000 strong at jointhefoot.com. It's your chance to get into the Megalobowl tournament right now at jointhefoot.com. That's where you can get access to Foot Clan Leagues, the extra weekly episode. Um, tons of sweet perks for our listeners, supporters at jointhefoot.com. The website's thefantasyfootballers.com. Let's talk news. <laughs> News and notes from around the league. I have a note in here. Uh, Jason Moore, former co-host of the Fantasy Footballers podcast, was spotted in a body bag Monday after two of his my guys were injured. He will be missed. A lot of people saying I'm uh, I'm trying to take your Reaper title, ooh, which is not one I want. I am uh, happy to not have but that, but it, it was not good news. I Kenyon not Drake spotted in a walking boot Monday. Tyler Lockett exited practice early <clears throat> thoughts <laughs> well i tweeted my thoughts that someone needs to go protect marquise brown immediately <laughs> <laughs> who's <laughs> actually the more injury prone of the three <laughs> someone go keep him safe look it's not what you want obviously <laughs> i want these players to be healthy it's not what i can predict um you know that's one of the hardest parts of fantasy is you talk uh, and you do the research and you do all this stuff and injuries you know, it's like you said with James Conner last year, you were all in. You didn't get to see it um, on the field. And, and both of these guys are presumed to be okay. They should be fine for week one. But I just don't like, you know, people are saying, oh, it's not. It's precautionary. But with Kenyon Drake, it's precautionary. That's, That's what a the, weird Cliff thing. Kingsbury said. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Why aren't all of your players in a walking boot then? they. I mean. That's that how I, I read it. I was like, wait. Kenyon Drake said, I'm good. Then he posts fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Yes. Like, what do you make of that, Jason? Do you know what this symbol means? <laughs> it means I sure hope what I'm saying is true. Or uh, or I'm lying. Or I'm lying, yes. Look, I, I hate to say it, but I, I was a believer that Chase Edmonds was going to have a considerable role in this offense regardless. At this point, he's he should be an imperative for a Kenyon Drake, um, somebody who's rostering Drake because – much like the Miles Sanders news, if they have to come out and say he should maybe be ready for San Francisco the first week, what is the chance that Drake gets a full workload? Is there a chance that Sanders in that first week, Drake in that first week, at least just those weeks, doesn't get a full workload? I mean, how are you not looking at Edmonds the same way you would look at Madison in, in Minnesota? Uh, he's pretty close for me in terms of priority, draft priority. Like Chase Edmonds... Is a, is a great player. We saw what happened when he was the starting running back when David Johnson sort of was playing that one week, <laughs> except it turned into to the Chase Edmonds show. So yes, yeah, Edmonds is he is a, a priority later round running back for me. Not necessarily uh, that if I draft Alvin Cook, I am drafting Alexander Madison. I don't have that same conviction of if I draft Drake, I have to get Edmonds, but. Is Madison the only one in that category in general for any of yes. these insurance backups? Yeah, I'm, I'm not drafting backups because uh, like, I, I would prefer to draft your backup. I want the opportunity at Stay the Stay away, ceiling. man. Stay away. <laughs> Tyler Lockett exited practice early. Yeah. Um, doesn't appear to be anything of grave concern. Ice up. 
Now, in speaking of much healthier players, AJ Green resumed running on Monday. Congratulations, Andy. So just and to AJ. be clear, AJ Green running, Tyler Lockett not running. I'm going to enjoy this one sweet, sweet five seconds of time in today's news and notes. Deontay Johnson, he's missed the last five days of practice. Steelers wide receiver, potential yeah. like he, he breakout was, candidate. He was the hot, hot breakout candidate over the the off season. Still this, is. Yeah, no, I, he still is. Just saying that this is he has very little great. work with Ben Roethlisberger. So it, it's worth at least you know noting that if he's missing a week here, he didn't really play with Big Ben last season. One game. Um, whereas Juju's now going into you know the third year with him, I, you you just drafted Juju personally in a, in uh, a home league, Mike. I I re I really hope Juju's the guy. You know he's one of those I think just super talented uh, players, and and if Big Ben is back, I, I I do believe Juju is going to have the breakout. The Steelers are wild. They're wild. Sure. There's two layers of questions. There's do we get the A B style five thousand passing yards Big Ben offense? That's layer one. And then mm -hmm. who's Big Ben's favorite guy? Which should be Juju if they can get some guys extending yes. down the field. James Washington uh, take the top off, let Juju work underneath. It's going to be interesting in Pittsburgh. All right, Tyrell Williams diagnosed with a torn labrum. He says he's going to attempt to play through it. That mm -hmm. is not good news. He tried to play through some injury last year basically went into fantasy irrelevance. They've got Brian Edwards. They've got Henry Ruggs. They've got Hunter Renfro. They've got Darren Waller. Yeah, it is absolutely rookie time for the Las Vegas Raiders. It being like, The hugest bump up here is Brian Edwards, who has uh, – we, we look for the, what's been dubbed the, the drumbeat in fantasy football. Of the, You want the drumbeat to be sustained and grow louder over time, over the offseason – over training camp, and the player who has risen the most, like that, that beat is going. It has been Brian Edwards. It, this was before Tyrell Williams was had the torn labrum in his shoulder. So now the opportunity is even greater for a player who has been impressing. Derek Carr has been gushing about Brian Edwards. He has absolutely moved into that later round. You want to take a rookie wide receiver? It's not. Generally, it's not my favorite draft strategy. I don't like going after these rookies, especially this year is is very bizarre. But like Jalen Rager, Jerry Judy, like Brian Edwards is reaching that category of I'm I'm willing to take my my last positional pick on Brian Edwards. So and see what happens. I agree with you that he is the big beneficiary here of Tyrell Williams possibly being injured or hampered or uh, slowed down by the shoulder. The question still remains on this team, if you're taking a rookie wide receiver, have you made the switch from Ruggs to Brian Edwards, or are you still taking Ruggs first? Oof. Uh, man, I it's probably – I think we – and last time I answered this, I think it was still Ruggs. Yeah, it's still Ruggs for me. I still lean as Ruggs. you got to go with the first round pick. I think I lean Edwards. But but I don't blame people for making Andy, the change. Andy, we seed the floor. <laughs> well, I just think that I want the volume shot, not the big play shot. I think Edwards is just bigger, faster, stronger. Well, not faster. Not faster. Not, yeah, he's definitely <laughs> bigger, not faster. Bigger, stronger, and yes. more of a uh, refined route tree. I think I would go that direction as a personal preference of what I want on my team. It depends on where you know where this guy factors into your wide receiver core, I think. I do want to remind people, because we, we lose this completely with all of this Raiders talk and their opportunity. Uh, John Paulson tweeted uh, earlier this month a reminder. Derek Carr finishes the number 15 fantasy quarterback last year. He lost Antonio Brown right before the season began. He lost Tyrell Williams during the season. Um, they've added Ruggs. They've added Edwards. They have, you know, you saw what Renfro did at the end of the year. Williams was really never right last year. I think Carr is interesting. He's, I think it in a He's ahead of Big Ben on my rankings. In a, wow. In, in okay. a super flex, I All can right. see Derek Carr being relevant as uh, – he is – I've said this before. He's my favorite target for a third quarterback because that's basically in the range where he's being drafted. He is being forgotten and left for dead. But, you know, he's had Michael Crabtree and Amari Cooper on the same team before. and and He was an MVP candidate that year. He was an MVP, but not for fantasy. He's never been a quarterback one in fantasy. Yeah, he's never finished the year that way. Um he has, he, Paulson also pointed out, um, severe home away 
splits over the last two years for Derek Carr, 16 and a half fantasy points at home. And the idea that maybe with the COVID situation and the fan situation, he may uh, he yep. may just not be as great on the road. All right, Alex Smith has not shown he's in a position to really challenge for the quarterback job, according to ESPN's John Kime. Mm. Um, we'll see. Yeah, we will see. I think, obviously, this team, if it's close, this team, I imagine, wants to go with the future of the franchise. I Yeah, I would imagine they go with Haskins, give him every chance to, to either take the job or lose the job before they make the switch to Alex Smith. Before we get into today's breakouts, I want to thank today's sponsor, Hello Fresh. Hello. Hey. Look, get fresh, pre-measured ingredients and mouth-watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door with HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Let's skip the trips to the grocery store. No one wants to go to the grocery store and you still want to make meals at home. HelloFresh, that's how you get it done and it is affordable. You can save 40% by using HelloFresh versus shopping at your local grocery store. It's more convenient. Look, these they have delicious options every single week, and they have different programs like low calorie, vegetarian, kid friendly recipe recipes. Pre portioned ingredients mean you're not overbuying, and their packaging is almost entirely made from recyclable, recyclable, and or recycled content. We've all had HelloFresh. We've all experienced this for years. They aren't joking. It's convenient. It's delicious. Home cooked meals. It. It's great. It's great. We'll just get to the get to the point. It's great. HelloFresh, and you can go to HelloFresh.com slash Fantasy80. Use code Fantasy80 to get a total of $80 off your first month, including free shipping on your first box. That's HelloFresh.com slash Fantasy80. The code is Fantasy80 for a total of $80 off your first month. Free shipping on your first box. HelloFresh.com for more details. And we want to thank Lightstream. If you want to save money this summer, why not start by paying less interest on your credit card balances? Lightstream offers a fixed rate credit card consolidation loans from 5.95% APR with auto pay and excellent credit, which is lower than the average credit card interest rate of over 19% APR. You can get a loan from $5,000 to $100,000, and you can even get your money as soon as the day you apply. Lightstream rewards consumers who have good credit with great interest rate and no fees. It's an easy way to save hundreds to thousands of dollars and lower your interest rate. Our listeners could save even more with an additional interest rate discount. The only way to get it is to go to lightstream.com slash footballers. That's L-I-G-H-T-S-T-R-E-A-M.com slash footballers. Subject to credit approval rate includes a 0.5% auto pay discount. Terms and conditions apply and offers are subject to change without notice. Visit lightstream.com slash footballers for more information. I'm going to get us into the breakouts, but first I want to just make sure we share this sweet off-season hype. Um, Here's the quote from Ooh, what we got? Steelers camp. Oh, practice after practice, the rookie is making non-rookie like plays after running non-rookie like routes oh, and I making non-rookie like catches. I feel like I know who it has to be, but it could be it could be two. It could be two guys. No, you have you please 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 you have to give it to me. It's Chase. Yes. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, Chase Claypool, baby. Let's go. All just in add, on just add another player to the mix. I that's good, man. Get Juju back in that slot. I honestly, I was, I I reached for Chase Claypool in our rookie draft. This is why I'm I'm so excited. I took him knowing in my heart, like Chase Claypool is, he, he'll take some time because you had all the the hullabaloo. So out of Notre Dame, just a giant man off the charts athletically. You're talking height, weight, and speed score is absolutely ridiculous for Chase Claypool. Lower production for uh, lower college production because he's from the Notre Dame system, and I I thought it would take some time. But Do you consider this is great. James Washington Washington to be a hit or a miss for the Steelers draft? I think we don't know yet. Okay. He is he's the unsung hero right now. Well, it's where, really important, Mike, because they go every other on hits. With their wide receivers. Oh, then. So if he's a total, miss, total Claypool's bust. a superstar. Total bust. If he's a hit. <laughs> <laughs> Very scientific. All right, breakout time. Breakouts. 
Breakouts, bust. Chase Claypool. <laughs> breakouts, bust, value sleepers this week on the show. Um, we have done some early breakout pick shows back in June. I am curious if you, I'm going to ask real quick before we get into it. We each picked one for today. You can see all of our UDK breakouts uh, at ultimatedraftkit.com. In uh, mid June, Jason Hollywood Brown. I feel like you are still on board. I would agree. He would be my pick today, except he's already a my guy. Go back and listen to Thursday's episode. Mike, you had Daniel Jones. Are you still in from yes. mid June? Yes, I am. I had Raheem Mostert. Yoked. Daniel yoked Jones. Oh, you've yoked yourself together with him for this <laughs> season. I know that. Um, Raheem are you Mostert. still in on Raheem Mostert? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Less so. A little bit less so. Is it the Jarek McKinnon? Yeah, I don't want more bodies back there We're getting handed the ball. But Mostert's camp reports have compensated for that McKinnon hype. Yeah, Mostert's been one of the best players at 49ers camp. It does seem like he has taken the starting job, which was this very bizarre. And paid. Uh, they did yeah, yeah, they, change they, they upped contract. his pay, but the anomaly of last year where Tevin Coleman was the starter every single week, mm -hmm. and then the guy who was better was Raheem Mostert. It's like the... The sixth man in the NBA is better than your starter. Like, but, yeah. but we need him to be the sixth man. Oh, yeah, they're okay. one of the teams that keep things very close to the vest as well. Like Kyle Shanahan values not putting things out into the media, mm -hmm. which is going to be interesting to follow this year. Um, but yeah, I, th I think I'm still in on it. I'm, I'm looking up at the – if you're watching on YouTube, there's a graphic up here. And, oh, yeah. Uh, Got to break out. Mike and I are – Behind, I always, behind bars. I always think of uh, the old like arcade Atari game, Breakout. I think of the Kool-Aid Man. <laughs> I think that one actually makes the most sense. It's like, bam, I'm oh, here now. What's yeah. up? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Do we have... Uh, <laughs> Can we get the Kool-Aid Al Borland, Man? you're not on the... Uh, you don't have that intro voice ready, do you? <laughs> okay, no. he's shaking his head. No, he can't say no. No. He doesn't want to change, change our view of... Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Breakout candidates, I'm not going first. Jason's going first. I'm going first. Oh, All my. Right. Oh, me. Oh, my. Well, let's start here. Um, yeah, I you, love it. You, look, it's it's a little bit deeper. We've been talking about, um, you know, obviously our my guys, tons of huge breakout stars, Terry McLaurin, Marquise Brown, um, who we really believe in. But this is someone that I've been rising on, and part of this came. I talked yesterday about I went and I watched Drew Locke tape to see what I actually believe. And it convinced me that I think Noah Fant is th this year's breakout tight end. You have a lot of things in his favor, namely the fact that Noah Fant is a freak of nature athlete. We're not talking, you know, he's Put on, on your sunglasses. If you go to the player profile on our yes. website for Noah Fant, he's in the Saquon Barkley range. I mean, the only he's ahead of George. Kittle. We call it the Chase Claypool range now, Jason. <laughs> you wish. Um, look, Noah Fant is not only a superstar athlete, but he was drafted to be an important receiving option. His big problem coming out of college was blocking. It, he, he was, you know, that was like a weakness, even though he's a super strong guy. He was known as a pass catching tight end. And you, you know, in, in years past, those guys would drop in the draft, but he was selected number 20 overall. And he was pretty good. He finished as the tight end 16. Now, that didn't that didn't win people. You know, last year he was mostly irrelevant. But that's what rookie tight ends do. We, we talk about that a lot. Rookie tight ends pretty much don't ever break out. Evan Ingram had a good rookie season, you know, pretty much end of list. That was the 13th best finish in the last 20 years for a rookie tight end. And it was the sixth best finish for a first rounder. So he showed enough flashes, mm -hmm. big breakaway plays. I watched when I was watching Drew Locke, I watched a lot of shout out to Denver, the city, um, <laughs> because their coverage of camp, nice weather. <laughs> well, yes, but no, no, no. Like they, I see why we have. How you doing, Denver Bron Broncos oh, fans? Yeah. <laughs> always writing in, so passionate. They clearly have a, a an extremely passionate fan base because I'm watching. It's the it's the oxygen. They're not getting enough. They must not be, but it's also the media. The media there was doing such a great job. You could basically watch their training camps. They had Peyton Manning sitting in there for an hour, where they're showing the the broad. They're broadcasting the camp and the practice. It was really cool. Watch a lot of it. And I saw 
several plays designed for Fant and several plays where when he got the ball, boom, he's gone. Uh, you know, look, Fant had the second highest yards per reception, 14.1 for a rookie tight end over the last 25 years. So the He talent, had a couple 130-yard receptions last exactly. year. Exactly. And you want to know who had uh, the number one since he was number two Kittle. in the last 25 years? Mark Andrews. Okay. So the, there are a lot of things here that say this is a year two leap for a special player who is on an offense that could take a step forward. And the nice thing is, because you don't expect him to be higher than third in targets, at least I don't for his team, I think he can get up around 80 or 90 targets in this offense as, as, a, as a ceiling. But he's the type of player who could be extremely efficient. You, you know, you, you saw last year Jared Cook just dominate with these 19-yard per receptions, tons of touchdowns. That's what I see could happen for Noah Fant. And if I have to take my shot on him or TJ Hawkinson or one of these young tight ends to break out, I'm calling for the breakout on Noah Fant. Yeah, he, he will have to take the step forward in year two. But I'm with you. I mean, you and I have both have him inside of our top ten at the position. I love the breakdown. What would you consider a fantastic finish for him? What's the ceiling? <laughs> I think he needs to be top five. I think a breakout has to be top five really? at tight end. Ooh, and that'll, I think that'll be tough. I, it will be tough. Because the, the volume will be the, the big piece. I could piece. easily see him having eight or more touchdowns, which would put him up in that category. Oh, my. Oh, my. What about you, Mike? You are, you are not calling for the breakout, at least based on the for, rankings. For Noah Fant, I, I can... Can you see the path? Oh, 100%. I can see the path. What's wild, and maybe we just have, you know, we've blocked it out from previous years, but this year in particular, when you look at like, the tight ends ranked 7 through 20, you go, oh, yeah, I can see the path for almost every single one of these guys. Maybe we get, like, a renaissance period here for the tight ends that we can get out of Probably the not. <laughs> Look, I'm trying to bring hope to the people over here, and you're just squashing it down. Well, every year, I mean, I think you're going to have the breakout tight ends, and then you're going to have the disappointments, like O.J. Howard last year. That was supposed to be the big breakout. But I, uh, You don't thing, have to take Noah Fant with a fifth-round pick, that's, No, That's what I love, and, and that's part of why I picked him. It's not just because I think he's worthy of a fifth-round pick. It's because he has the path to breaking out, and he costs you nothing. Noah Fant is not being drafted – at least in dynasty leagues, he is. But in in a redraft league, Noah Fant is a double digit pick. The major breakout candidates at tight end. What I look for are those big play capabilities because that is a differentiator from being the just down and distance first down weapon. Yeah. Last year, he had a seventy five yard reception in one game, a forty eight yard reception, a forty three yard reception. Reminds me of the Mark Andrews, the George Kittles, those type of players. That kind of upside, I'm on board for. Would also you? If you were going to lock somebody into your lineup today, like you don't get to change amount, this is a best ball type of question. Are you locking Jonu or are you locking Fanton, Jason? Ooh. I would lock Fanton because while I think Jonu's week to week baseline could be a little bit higher, uh, I don't think Jonu has the games that you know end up with 125 yards and a touchdown the way that Noah Fant can hmm. can have a, a a week winning performance. All right, my breakout candidate that I'm going to bring forward today. It's Ronald Stinking Jones. <laughs> Emphasis on the middle part. Ronald Jones, um, I think he has just an incredible opportunity this year. He's being drafted as the RB29. Last season, he finishes, okay, okay. He finishes the RB26 last season. You know what he did that on? He did that on 36% of his team's snaps. 36% last the season. The starter. He, and Peyton Barber is gone. Ronald Jones is the goal line back. And I want to draw your attention in particular to what the primary ball carrier does for Tom Brady offenses, the opportunities that they have. Um, over the last, uh, going back to 2014, the lead running back for Tom Brady. I mean, great opportunities inside the red zone. Team rushing touchdowns inside the five. Jonas Gray. 10 carries oh, inside man. the five. Like oh, Air Blunt, man. Mike Gillisley, Sony Michelle. Double digit touchdowns all the way back to 2014 for the lead ball carrier for Tom Brady's offense. Ronald Jones had four of those opportunities last year. Four chances inside the five. All four were touchdowns for Ronald Jones. You look at what's taken place in camp. Keyshawn Vaughn is getting the Bruce Arians always 
mm-hmm. treats his rookies this way treatment, he's irrelevant to me. He is, when Bruce Arians doesn't mince words, yeah, what's his role? He's punt returner, maybe. Maybe special teams. David Johnson got the same treatment when Chris Johnson was the guy, and I think the difference in talent between Ronald Jones and the other weapons that they have, I mean, LaShawn McCoy's there, yeah. But Ronald Jones was a very, very good runner. A high percentage of his runs, over 10 yards, he had breakaway capabilities, and he is bulked up, he's gotten stronger, and looks the part. I know he doesn't catch a lot of passes, but when he catches passes, he does a lot with them. He was, uh, I think, over nine per catch last year. So that's very impressive. He was also very reliable in terms of targets to, to catches in the at the end of game, something Bruce Arians needs. I think he caught 12 or 13 fourth quarter passes. He's not getting a lot of chances there, but he's so explosive that when he does get them, you know, it's like Derrick Henry a little bit. You know, Henry doesn't get a ton of opportunities in the passing game, but he finds a way to do a lot with them. If Ronald Jones is the guy for Tom Brady, double-digit touchdowns is a very reasonable projection for him, and that will outpace RB29 by a lot. I know that we have a lot of uh, Folkland listeners who are more seasonal. They don't necessarily listen all off-season, which uh, upgrade upgrade your fantasy listen to the off-season. But if you're just coming back and you're waiting for me to jump all over Andy and be like, but Ronald Jones <laughs> sucks – then you have missed what I've been talking about this offseason. I've gone back. I've watched the tape, and I am in. I'm in on Ronald Jones. At running back 29, the opportunity versus the cost, the risk versus reward, is is outstanding. And I, I am happy to draft Ronald Jones where he's going right now for the chance of the goal line, for the chance of a, of a true breakout. It is a nebulous situation there where if they just decide to kind of give him a little bit more of that third down work, he can he can vault up. I don't expect that, but I think he's going to uh, be a great now, depth piece and um, very much outdo his ADP. Fourth highest yards after the catch at the running back position last season. In doing doing it on thirty six percent of snaps, it's kind of ridiculous. So if we expect the offense to move, I think you're going to need him to score touchdowns. But mm-hmm. I think he could do it. All right, my breakout pick. I'm going Theo with Theo Riddick. I am going with <laughs> the other rookie running back that people are targeting Jonathan Taylor for the Indianapolis Colts and the the reason for this I have bumped him way up in my rankings and it's it's go time it's time to make 17 up to 17 for Mike it's time to make the stand on who you are in on who you are out on and I believe in the 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 talent of Jonathan Taylor Thomas (laughs) yes look what an actor (laughs) yes uh, one of the best covers of Teen Bop of all time. <laughs> I mean, the, the comp for Jonathan Taylor is the Incredible Hulk. If you're going to compare him to anybody else in the universe, the Colts traded up to get him. When a team trades up for a running back, you have a huge hit rate of success. On top of, he was a second round pick, so they traded up in the second to go and get him. Uh, you had Jim Ursay before the draft. There was reports that Marlon Mack, they're working on a contract extension. Ursay went out of his way to say, oh, that's not true. And that's a really strange thing for, for the owner of a team to come and say, no, we're, we're not actually going to give him an extension. In college, Jonathan Taylor averaged over 2,000 rushing yards a year. And okay, That's let's, pretty good. Let's talk about the pass catching. Yes, Jonathan Taylor is not the best pass catching running back in this, this group of, ruck, of rookies. But he still had a 10% target share in the final year, and he gets Philip Rivers. Over the last two years, Philip Rivers has sent an average of 28% of his targets to Melvin Gordon and Austin Eckler. And I want to remind people Melvin Gordon, okay, let me just ask this Is Melvin Gordon a pass catching running back? You're saying is he a, like a prototypical pass catching running no, back? No, just when you think of Melvin Gordon, you're like, I do. I he do catches think the ball that. in yeah. the NFL, yes. Yeah. yeah, he wasn't used like that in college. It, in, in Wisconsin, you had, so his sophomore year, two receptions. Junior year, one reception. Then he shot up to 19 his final year. Jonathan Taylor had 26 last year. Like, he, the, like I said. Not the most fluid compared to the other guys. I think but, he's pretty fluid. I, but I'm yeah. not, I don't actually worry about his skill set as a pass catcher at all. 
I watched uh, all of his training camp tape. I watched all of his route running. I watched all of his catches. He wants to prove that he's that guy. I don't worry about that one bit. I am so glad you're saying that. Even I was going to chime in because he is a good pass catcher. Like, he he is. Yeah. When I, think I, watched, he, I think he's more than a capable pass catcher. Go watch Leonard Fournette's uh, combine drills and then watch Jonathan Taylor's combine drills. And you go, oh, one of them has that little hitch, that little securing the ball, giddy it's up. It's called the Howard. Is that awesome? Yes. Go with the Ronald Jones. Yeah, yeah, I mean that's fair. <laughs> but no, Jonathan Taylor looks great when he catches the ball. My my question is not whether he can do it. It's he has to be. They have to use him that way. And in my uh, response to that is Philip Rivers will even if Jonathan Taylor doesn't turn into the third down guy. Let's say Naheem Hines is the guy, excellent third down back. That's a prototypical pass catching running back. Melvin Gordon was getting receptions on first and second down. Because that's where Philip Rivers go uh, goes with the ball. It's behind the best offensive line in football. Yes, Marlon Mack is there, but reading through the coach speak, how I am interpreting it is they're saying, "Yeah, Marlon Mack's a starter, but we're going to ride the hot hand." They're li they're leaving the crack you know, there for it. Jonathan Taylor comes out week one, looks much better than Marlon Mack in the realm of possibilities. And it's Jonathan Taylor as the starter from here on out. I am all in on Taylor. You I have love to be so excited. <laughs> I love the point that you made though to start your argument. You absolutely have to draw a line in the sand with Jonathan Taylor and the draft capital and what you're willing to yes. do. Now you've you reached a different conclusion than the one I reached, but you have to do it now. I am oh, that you made me want to make a formal statement that I am <laughs> I'm out on the rookie season of Jonathan Taylor. Fair. I everything that I've read around camp I, mean, I know it's 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 it is what it is, but Marlon Max had an outstanding camp yesterday, uh, incredible day, big runs. Naeem Hines been the most active running back in camp. Jonathan Taylor is a specimen, one that I think will be put a little bit on uh layaway for next season. So I'm officially drawing my line on the not enough work, great player can catch the ball, won't get enough this year, will disappoint you. Uh, Mike is all in, moved him up to 17. And I would be far more on the Mike side. I believe in the talent, and while I agree with what Andy's saying to start the season, I do think it will be a one, two, three punch with those three backs. By the midway point, when the playoff push is happening and they need to win games, he is their best player by not a small margin. And this is coming from someone who believed in Marlon Mack as a, as a good running back. When they were on the clock with uh, their first pick in the second round, uh, they were him and haunt. They did. They said it was tough between Jonathan Taylor and Michael Pittman. But they looked at their team, right? I mean, mm -hmm. they needed another wide receiver. That wide receiver, too, has been a catastrophe, whereas they have Marlon Mack. They have Naeem Hines. So they went Pittman. And then they're like, oh, oh, we've made a mistake. I still, I, our team's better with Jonathan Taylor traded up just a couple spots later and grabbed him. I'm, I'm in. Here, I, here's I an interesting he, parallel. He's just too good. He's very good. And, and like I said, Marlon Mack's had a great camp. Um, how much do you see this situation – like I, I see the Ravens backfield in maybe a similar light. Mark Ingram is going to have one more year there. J.K. Dobbins waiting in the wings. Here you have Marlon Mack on a contract year. Um, you guys both think they'll make the transition sooner because obviously you're both in on Ingram. You're not in on J.K. Dobbins in the same fashion, right. even though he's got a massive uh, – he's got a quarterback advantage over Jonathan Taylor. He's got a similar offensive line situation. He's got a lot of talent. Well, um, but yeah, you don't he, see those situations. He has the quarterback edge in terms of the Ravens are going to score a whole bunch of points. Jonathan Taylor has the quarterback edge of that. His quarterback targets the running back a bunch. Over under 20 receptions in his rookie season for Jonathan Taylor. Ooh. Because I will take the under on that, and that I, will not get it done for me. I have I have the over statted out, so I will take the over. All right. You guys want to uh, want to get into a little bit of mailbag? Sure. I gotta find the. You drop. gotta find the button. I gotta find the drop. <laughs> While you're looking for it, I <laughs> mailbag. Mailbag. Apologies. You. When I find it, I find it. Okay. Sure. I see that now. I have Jonathan Taylor uh, statted out for 25 receptions, so I'm taking the over. Okay. Still disappointing. All right. Well, this is this will be a fun one to watch. I mean, I. He's such a talented player. There will be either great joy 
Well, great frustration when it comes to Jonathan Taylor's rookie Possibly season. Possibly both. We're doing our, our fun little, a little bit of family both. home league where we're getting people who've never played fantasy before. My wife was on the clock. She's never played. She, 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 she needs a running back, and she says, who's someone that is like really talented but you don't maybe expect them to – you don't think they're going to score that much or be involved this year, but they're just really good? And I couldn't come up with anybody for a minute. And then eventually I was like, oh, wait. Jonathan Taylor's amazing, but I don't expect him to have that role, and she drafted him. So. All right, mailbag question. To, uh, Armin in Tucson, Arizona. Calvin Ridley or Hollywood Brown? Mm. Full PPR Dynasty League. Oh okay, my. That's, that's the real. I think we'd all take Ridley over Brown in a redraft. Do you yes. take him over Brown in a, a Dynasty? I do. So Calvin Ridley is 25 he will be turning 26 in December man that is that is a tough it's, it's a three a, year gap two two and a half yeah 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 yes yeah. what's what's hard is I'm gonna start with the redraft side of it is the probability of being a, a top 15 wide receiver I think that the probability still lies with Calvin Ridley despite him being the number two option at best on his team. We've, we, we, we recently talked about you know, how it was impossible to see Chris Godwin overtaking Mike Evans. And honestly, it's, it seems impossible right now to see Calvin Ridley overtaking Julio Jones. And so, uh, But it's one of those things that, well, that certainly could it happen. Will, it will happen at some point. At some point. point, it will, yes. It, Julio Jones had the same thing. Julio Jones had to overtake Roddy White, which seemed like an impossibility at one point. Anyway, so back to my, my point of the probability that Calvin Ridley is a top 15 wide receiver is higher than Marquise Brown. But Marquise Brown, his ceiling, if everything goes right, is higher than Calvin Ridley to me. Uh, okay. All right. I, I think I see their ceiling similarly. My son faced down the A.J. Brown versus Calvin Ridley decision yesterday. Mm. How do you view, like if you throw him into the mix, A.J. Brown, Hollywood Brown, and Calvin Ridley in a dynasty? I would go AJ Brown first, oh, and then really? I, I at this point I would probably still take Calvin Ridley over Marquise Brown. You know my love for Marquise Brown. I I, I would Tell I would like him, more. but the you know when you're in a dynasty startup draft, it's one of those things where the rookie drafts you could take a little bit more shot, a little bit more risk. But you're going to have this team forever, and I I really when I'm in a dynasty startup, I'm going to take the known commodity over the higher upside. If there's, you know, a questionable decision here, and I think we've just we've seen more from Calvin Ridley in two years of being able to command more targets. Uh, we we have yet to see Hollywood necessarily stay on the field. I I expect a breakout this year, but I don't want to just have my dynasty startup rosters be projections of the hopes of, and dreams, hopes and dreams of of the brightest future. Yeah, yeah, because there aren't always the brightest futures. Here is another spin on the question, though. Calvin Ridley, percentage chance that he is better than Julio Jones this season. Nobody would have made that bet necessarily on Godwin over Evans. What odds do you, you know, Julio's 31, 32 years old. What odds do you give Calvin to be better fantasy-wise? He's, would, he's found a way in the end zone that, that Julio hasn't. Yeah, right? I, I would say 15%, and, it, and that's exactly how it would come. It would be touchdowns. Ridley ends up with 10 touchdowns. Julio gets his six, um, and if they're close in receptions, obviously Julio will have the yardage, but uh, you know, I, I think there is 15%. Yeah, I'd put it in about 10. Julio Jones keeps his six touchdowns real close. <laughs> yeah. These are my six, and you can have yeah. them. <laughs> All right, let's go to a voicemail question. Hey, ballers, this is Paul from Chicago, big fan of the show. My question is, what offense do you think can surprise people in 2020 and actually be very good for fantasy? Thanks, guys. Keep up the great work. Okay, so fantasy surprise. For me, it is is pretty easy and obvious. I'm going to give the second shout-out to the Rockies. But uh, I think Denver could be a fantasy surprise. If Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy and Noah Fant all come through, that means that Locke came through, and that means that there's goal line opportunities for uh, Melvin Gordon. I think, you know, I've been very pessimistic on this offense until recently where I'm starting to see a path to where, yeah, they, they if they click, I think it will be a surprise, and it will be really good if it clicks. 
Mike, do you have a candidate that jumps out to you? I think the Raiders are in that category for sure. me. Sure. I think more viable fantasy options in Las Vegas. And I am going to go with something that would be a complete surprise, but it could happen. And it's because I still believe in Sam Darnold. So I'm going to bring Ooh. up the New York Jets. It was a you have to throw last season out. Lev Bell was in my he was my initial entry uh, for, for the forgiveness. forgiveness. Yeah. The dude had mono. I look, I, I get it. It's 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 funny. It's funny that he had mono. He had a a, a kissing disease that From shows Topanga. up in in <laughs> uh, yes, yes, yes. yes. It, th see, it's that's it's, why it's funny. And I hope that Sam can look back now and laugh and be like, "Yeah, that was unfortunate, but yeah. it happened." Like, All love and smooches from our side. People can't get back to, into high school like, sometimes for months, and this guy forced his way back onto an NFL field. There's no way that Sam Darnold was. Right, and he but, showed. But, oh yes, but, voice of public opinion. But Mike, yes, is this an number adamant? two? Yes, he has to overcome some things. But if you go up and going back into last off season, despite the hiring of Adam Gaze, people were there was excitement for what Sam Darnold could do in his second year because his rookie year, you saw some things toward the end of the year of this is a growing quarterback. Maybe he really is a franchise guy. He might guy. physically have been growing too at that age. <laughs> yeah, that's no, that's no joke. <laughs> so that's that's my the one that would surprise me. That would, but I I, I see what I'm you're not, saying. I'm not completely out on Sam Darnold yet. But I feel like that the question would have to be which one would shock you, not surprise you, but shock you. I, I want to throw one other team out because I think this is a great question. There can be a lot of fantasy gold to be found by the entirety of of NFL teams turning around one way or the other surprise downsides but a post hype sleeper as a team I think last year I called for the collapse mm. but the Browns this year I think uh, could be much much better I, I like Chubb I like Hunt uh, I'm curious about Odell Beckham if he's going to be back and Austin Hooper apparently has been despite my you know uh, uh calling for how much I I do not believe in his fantasy value this year, he's been dominating camps by all beat writers, uh, you know, reporting. So they're certainly a post-hype sleeper, and sure. they don't cost what they did last year. Yeah, I agree with that. It, the Jets, the Jets popped into my head. I, you know, the contrast that is most frustrating for me, and I think we talked about this in the studio a little bit. It's true of every sport. It's true of every great player. You have one, you know, it's talent opportunity. It's also landing spot for these guys. Some players just end up in incredible situations. Some don't. Josh Allen in Buffalo, you know, drafted in the same draft class as Sam Darnold. Darnold was drafted ahead of him. Most people believed in the talent of Sam Darnold, far above Josh Allen. And, uh, you know, Buffalo's done a better job of taking the player they drafted, equipping him with the kinds of weapons that mm -hmm. complement him. You take the worst deep ball thrower and give him the best deep ball receiver in football. Seems like a nice way to help bridge the gap yes. on a challenge. Yes, they've been Give him smart. John Brown, get, let him run the football. And here I go and I, I look at the Jets and I say, boy, you gave him Jamison Crowder. Mm. Oh, no, Bashad Perriman. And you just haven't quite equipped him. Maybe this offensive line's better, maybe it's not. It will go a long way to helping Sam Darnold not make mistakes. Not see them ghosts. But you kind of wish <laughs> that you could almost put all the players into a computer and run a simulation as them as the starter for every football team and see who's the real best player. I, like, you can't do that. I love what – Darnold is better than his situation. And honestly – That's a good way to put it. Next year, I think Darnold – like, I, I, I would be willing to target Darnold very cheap in a dynasty league because I think when he is freed – of the number two, which will be next year, make no mistake. Okay. You can't. You can never stop a number two from. <laughs> free. You can always. You can always stop for so long. <laughs> Once it's time. It's time, uh, and then it's released. And uh, oh I, my! I, I think that uh, that light, lightening that load will be good for oh Sam God. Darnold. Here's the, here's the truth though. You can be. You can oh. get. You can get finished by your circumstances too. Dave, yes, you David can. Carr is the biggest example in my mind. Recent history. Yeah. You 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 get pummeled for three straight years. You lose your confidence. You're still young. You've not had the opportunity. Then it's hard to. I mean, anybody think Josh Rosen's going to have a fair shake the rest of his career? Nope. Number ten overall pick. Yeah. And, and he was in a really bad situation exactly. in Arizona. And, it's, and then it's over. I mean, I don't think Sam Darnold. 
I mean, they br- they could bring in another coach next year, and that could change things. That's but, what I'm but saying. But this is, this is a make or break year for me. Yeah, and and you know he could he could go the way of Ryan Tannehill, who took a while to get out of the shadow of Adam Gase, and then was like, oh, yeah. all right, and he then can he do got the things. bag. Yeah. All right. We want to thank Pristine Auction. Speaking of Noah Fant, a signed Broncos mini helmet. Noah Fant, fifty-five dollars. Oh. $55. oh. So you can check out pristineauction.com, use the code BALLERS, and get a $10 credit. That'll do it for today's episode. It was a good one. Yes. <laughs> we will see you tomorrow, Foot Clan. Be safe. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.